Hi, I'm Vincent Odekirken, neurologist at the Amsterdam UMC, and today we're going to be talking about Parkinson's disease. We're going to do this by making three videos, of which this is the first one, in which we'll be covering the symptoms. The next two videos will be covering pathophysiology and medical management. First things first. What kind of symptoms can you see in movement disorders and PD, Parkinson's disease specifically? So, starting with the symptoms, how do we divide those in movement disorders? Well, basically, there's two or three categories in which you can divide abnormal movement. You can have too much movement, hyperkinesia, too little movement, hypokinesia, and there's a kind of a third category of tremor, shaking, which can occur in hypokinetic syndromes and hyperkinetic syndromes. So I kind of want to keep this one apart. There are certain symptoms that you can divide into the hyperkinetic category, such as dystonia, chorea, bellism, myoclonus, and tics. In too little, there's basically Parkinson's disease and diseases that kind of look like Parkinson's disease, which we call Parkinsonisms or atypical Parkinsonism. So, starting with Parkinson's disease, what kind of symptoms can you expect? Historically, the focus has been on motor symptoms, too much or too little movement because of the disease. And the three core uh, symptoms that you can uh, use to diagnose Parkinson's disease are hypokinesia or bradykinesia, which is too little movement with a decrement of movement in which the uh, movement slowly fades and gets less in amplitude and frequency. Tremor, which is typically a resting tremor when the arm is relaxed during sitting or walking. And rigidity, which you cannot really see, but you can feel when passively moving the arm. There's a hypertonia that is present during the entire motion of passively extending the arm. So these are the three core motor symptoms of Parkinson's disease. But there's a much broader range of symptoms that can occur. Apart from this hypo and bradykinesia, resting tremor and rigidity, there used to be a fourth core syndrome, uh, symptom of this syndrome, which was postural instability. But this is actually a feature that usually occurs much later in the disease, so it was abandoned as a core feature for the diagnosis. But people with Parkinson's disease have much more types of symptoms that can occur during the disease, even early. It's a broad list of lack of smell, hyposmia, mood disorders, anxiety, hypophonia, talking very softly, having less uh, uh, of a facial expression, a poker face or hypomemia, micrographia, writing too small, and all sorts of dysautonomous syndromes like um, obstipation, constipation, dry skin, hypersalivation, impaired swallowing, and uh, usually further on in disease, cognitive disorders and even dementia. So, what are the clinical stages of PD? Usually, the diagnosis is made when there is presence of tremor and or rigidity and or bradykinesia, of which at least two of these core uh, symptoms should be present. But after a while, um, response to medication of, the, um, of these uh, symptoms lessens. There uh, are symptoms that are induced by medication for the uh, Parkinson's disease symptoms like medication-induced dystonia or dyskinesias, which is too much movement, or response, in the, uh, response, uh, response fluctuations, in which you see periods of uh, too much movement followed rapidly by periods of too little movement. So people don't uh, evenly respond to medication over time, over the day. And after a while, other symptoms uh, tend to become more prominent and more burdensome, like cognitive dis uh, disorders or dysautonomic features or postural instability. So those are the three classic phases of diseases after uh, of the disease after start of the motor symptoms. But PD starts much earlier than that when you look at um, preclinical symptoms, which is kind of a contradiction, but usually symptoms like constipation, Depression and hyposmia are 
present much earlier than we make the diagnosis based on the motor symptoms. And the disease actually starts years and years before we can actually diagnose it based on the tremor rigidity, rigidity and radiokinesia. So even as early as 20 years before the actual diagnosis, these symptoms can already be present. And um, uh, the preclinical stage of Parkinson's disease can be pathologically uh, evident in the body. How fast the disease progresses after diagnosis is very variable. One can say um, the period of uh, symptoms without any response fluctuation is usually about five years and after that response fluctuations start and after about 10 years or 15 years cognitive disorders or prominent dysautonomic features or postural instability gets the most hindersome. So this is a very rough sketch and there's a large variability in this. One of my take-home messages of today is that Parkinson is not uh, one disease, it's a spectrum of symptoms and even syndromes of which the pathophysiology is kind of the same but the external phenotype what we see can be very different one can be diagnosed with parkinson's at as early as 18 years but also it can start very late in life and i think that's not the same disease if you look at what's going on on the inside of the body merely some of the core pathological features and core clinical features are kind of the same so it's not one disease that's important to remember. There's a spectrum in the Parkinson diagnosis um, in many different uh, ways. The age of onset, which I already discussed a little bit. The presence of tremor. About 30% of the patients with Parkinson's disease don't experience any tremor at all, while others present mainly with resting and even postural tremor. That can be very little or very severe, so there's a spectrum in that too. Also, postural instability rarely starts at the beginning of the disease in young patients, and in patients that are older, postural instability occurs more frequently after the diagnosis and occurs earlier after the diagnosis, so that's also something that can be very different in different patient types. Same goes for cognitive disorders like lack of attention, lack of multitasking, up to even dementia in some people that never occurs and in other people that occurs very prominently and early in the disease. So think of it as a spectrum and not as a set uh, clinical phenotype. And there is even an extent beyond Parkinson's disease as a diagnosis of syndromes that look like Parkinson's disease but are uh, just uh, different in how they look from the outside but also what's going on inside the body we call those parkinsonisms it looks a lot like parkinson's disease but it's clinically and pathophysiologically pathophysiologically different so what are those parkinsonisms there are a couple of phenotypes that can be distinguished One of the more uh, common ones is lewy body dementia which is pathophysiologically based on the same protein disorder we'll discuss that later but it occurs with much earlier, earlier cognitive symptoms, especially vivid visual hallucinations, cognitive disorders early in the disease, along with motor symptoms, and strong fluctuations of the motor, but uh, more prominently the cognitive disorders over the day. They can have very good days and very bad days. A different disease that also looks like Parkinson's disease is multiple system atrophy which doesn't only affect the motor system, but uh, occurs very much on the autonomic side of the symptom spectrum. So they have early dis dysautonomia with erectile dysfunction, emission disorders, uh, uh, differences in sweating, um, differences in blood pressure and bradyotachycardia, uh, along with a third system that is also involved, uh, mainly the cerebellar system. So they have motor symptoms, autonomic features and cerebellar features and they develop uh, cerebellar syndrome in different uh, varieties some people very much other people very little but this autonomy is always very uh, clearly present in this diagnosis and also 
they can have fairly early REM sleep behavioral disorders, which also occur in regular Parkinson's disease, but usually later and in less of the population of the Parkinson's disease patients. So it's a different uh, clinical phenotype that also occurs pathologically in different areas of the brain. What they all have in common is that they all uh, depend on the same protein misfolding, uh, mainly alpha synuclein, which is present in all three diseases, Parkinson's, Lewy bodies, and MSA. The list is longer. Uh, there's another disease which is more rare, which is called progressive supranuclear palsy, or PSP, which is more of a different protein that is misfolded in this disease. It's tauopathy, and it presents mainly with early balance issues and postural instability, vertical gaze, palsy of the eyes, and more frontal dis-executive uh, symptoms uh, in their behavior. Also another Parkinsonism that is more um, far away from regular Parkinson's disease in its uh, clinical phenotype is cortical basal degeneration, which um, leads to a very asymmetric motor symptom or syndrome with uh, unilateral hyperkinesia, rigidity, dystonia, and alien lymph uh, phenomenon. And it's uh, uh, due to very uh, asymmetrical cortical degeneration with also uh, uh, different cognitive and cognitive functions. Two other uh, categories of Parkinsonism I'll discuss very briefly. It's vascular Parkinsonism, so hypokinetic rigidity, rigidity syndromes due to vascular lesions in the brain, and iatrogenic Parkinsonism, which is due to medication. So we name these as separate entities, but should we really see it as one? There's overlap in uh, the clinical phenotype, but there's also overlap in what goes wrong on the inside of the body, the pathological phenotype. And some uh, authors uh, suggest that you should see it more as a spectrum disorder, even within Parkinson's disease, but also around Parkinson's disease with all the different Parkinsonisms that occur in different sites of the brain with different proteins that are involved and also different phenotypes in what they cause, um, ranging from mainly cognitive symptoms to mainly motor symptoms to mainly dysautonomic syndromes to mainly cerebellar syndromes and dystonia. So we should see it more as a spectrum of what's going wrong inside the brain that leads to these diseases. So when you have a clinical diagnosis or suspicion of Parkinson's disease, what should you do? Usually there is no clear indication for a radi radiological or lab investigation because it's a clinical diagnosis and um, it cannot uh, generally be seen on a regular CT or MRI of the brain. There's no test that re uh, very specifically and sensitively uh, uh, diagnoses Parkinson's disease. So it's a clinical diagnosis. You can perform an MRI, especially if you have um, any signs of atypical clinical syndromes. So red flags like uh, vertical gaze palsy, early falls, strong fluctuations, uh, history of uh, vascular disorders. And those MRIs can lead you as, with some additional clues to diagnosing an atypical Parkinsonism. A dead SPECT scan, which looks at the nigrostriatal degeneration, is generally not useful because it's, uh, it's uh, usually um, affected in all types of Parkinsonism. But if you are um, in doubt if it's an essential tremor that kind of looks like Parkinson's disease or a psychogenic tremor or psychogenic hypokinesia, those are normal uh, dead SPECT scans. So that's a, a, an evaluation that you can do if you're in doubt between essential tremor, psychogenic, trenic, psychogenic tremor versus PD. Um, IBC them, SPECT scan, um, these are still in Dutch, I'm sorry about that, are not really useful, but sometimes they are used as a uh, differential between MSA, PSP, and the Parkinson's disease. This is an abnormal dead SPECT scan, which shows uh, nigrostriatal degeneration also on the 
right side of the brain than the left. So what can we learn from this? I think three take home messages we can uh, try to remember today. PD is a clinical syndrome of motor symptoms, but also a lot of non-motor symptoms that can affect patients early on in the disease. It's a spectrum, even within Parkinson's disease, one patient is, can be very different from the other that uh, affects treatment too, of which I will be talking later. And there's also a spectrum beyond Parkinson's disease of the Parkinsonisms that are different in their clinical phenotype, but also in what goes wrong uh, protein-wise in the brain. And we'll come to that in the next short video on Parkinson's disease. In part two, we will be discussing the pathophysiology of Parkinson's disease and the recent advances and insights in this. I hope to see you next time. Thank you for your attention.